Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio, hope everybody's well. Um, this afternoon I'm going to paint a bee and a sunflower. Why not? Um, I've painted a lot of bees in my time, none of them particularly accurately, but they do have a certain je ne sais quoi. Here's the one I'm going to be modelling this drawing on, which is one that I've got framed in a little uh, frame in the studio. So that's what I'm going to be starting with. And I'm going to paint it uh, today with a sunflower, um, which is, by some strange coincidence, the national flower of um, the Ukraine. So here we go with the bee. Um, we'll just, I'll do him from this side this time and I'm going to put the sunflower over here. I'm drawing with an HB pencil on a piece of um, um, Etival paper by Canson and uh, this is not 100% um, cotton or anything like it, it's um, cellulose cellulose based paper and uh, so I'm just putting the body of the bee in, we'll make that a little bit rounder there, we won't forget his antennae here and uh, so just coming down here with his very various stripes and his his bottom, don't have very many in this particular pose, we don't have very many um, legs visible, do we? But uh, he's got one or two over here and there's one there and the other one is going to be sort of underneath his wing, which I suppose you could probably see through his wing because the wings are translucent, aren't they? So I'll just uh, rub out some of the superfluous lines there. Okay, so that's the B, and then now, so we'll keep that to one side because I want to remember the colours. You just need uh, two yellows, a, a yellow yellow and an orangey yellow for the B, and uh, something like black or Payne's grey or something. Um, and then I'm going to put the sunflower, I'm going to give the sunflower some, some stalk because they have quite sturdy stalks don't they and sometimes I think the leaves of a sunflower sort of get a bad deal because you don't well leaves in general they don't tend to get painted as much do they as um as the flowers which seems a bit, a bit of a shame really so we'll put some leaves in there and uh, another one over this side We're going to keep them very loose. And then up here, we will have the petals. They have a lot of petals, sunflowers, but obviously not going to draw every single one. We just sort of indicate them here a bit. And then the center is a kind of golden brown and then it has a sort of circle in the middle, doesn't it? So a lighter brown and then a darker brown in the middle and then dots, lots of dots. Uh, over the top of it. Okay, 
So just a very rough sketch. Just to give us an idea of how we're going to do this. Um, and then I've got my Gallo set here, A Gallo handmade Italian paints. And the reason why I've chosen that today is mainly because of the yellow, um, because it's got some quite nice yellows in it, this one. So I'm going to pick up the lemon yellow and um, we will put a band of lemon yellow there and there, and there in the B, I think, one, two, three. And then we want some orange as well. I'm going to use this, uh, this orange rather than quinacridone gold, just for a change. And just let that blend in with the yellow. And then we will want a sort of pinky beige colour for the tail area of this particular type of bee. So we just pop that in down there. And then while we are on the bee, we can pick up some sort of neutral grey, brownish, bluish, shady something or other, and just drop a little bit of that in to the wings loosely. And then we'll, um, we'll let that dry a little bit. I'm going to switch to a bigger brush and I'm going to, uh, again, lemon yellow, First of all, I think we might wet this a bit first. And then some of the other yellow that's there. And we will be coming in with some oranges in a minute. I just want to start off with some really loose yellows. Okay, so then quinacridone gold is crying out to me and saying, what's wrong? Why didn't you choose me? Do you have that kind of feeling about any of your colours? Why didn't you choose me? Nobody ever chooses... No, that's not true. I use a lot, a lot of quinacridone. So don't be silly. And this is another orange here from, but I don't like that because it's opaque, so we won't be bothering with that one, so you can go away. Just pop a bit of that in, that might be useful somewhere else. No, I like my quinacridone. And then we can put that in quite heavily in the centre for the, uh, the seed, seedy part. And I know it looks like just one great big orange blob, yellow blob at the moment, but bear with me. Then we need to put in the stem. So we'll come in with some soft green, which is basically a mixture of odds and ends that I've got on the, on the uh, palette, which I don't know if you can see. Hang on a second, let's move that. There we are, the greens over here. It's just all sorts of greens and things. So we'll just drop that in and we'll let that all blend. And then we'll come in a bit later with something else to put in the shadow or whatever.
and um, some, some Windsor Violet mixed with the green to give us a sort of shadow colour. A little bit of violet. I'll keep that nice and loose. And then the tricky thing, I always find it's a bit tricky. The centre of these flowers, I always find them a bit tricky and I tend to overwork them badly. So let's hope I don't today. So we need some dark brown to mix into the quinacridone to give us a darker centre. So that's just like burnt sienna or something like that mixed in. Quite thick, less water there, so we just put that in and keep our fingers crossed that it spreads out nicely. And then we might put a few dots around the outside edge around here and then that any luck that will also spread up in that direction. And we'll put in some brown on the edges here to sharpen up the petals a little bit. And uh, over this side. And we'll let that uh, do its thing. And I need to come back to the bee, so I'll, I'll get rid of that big brush. I need a slightly smaller one. And now we're going to be coming in with black. Um, I'm not sure if any of these colors are actually. No, none of those are anything like black, so we don't, can't use that. To resort to my little dishes. This is Payne's Grey. Just just put in the black stripes. Let it run if it wants to run. Keep this one a little bit lighter. I just mixed that with a bit of pink. to just let that dry. And we just pull some of these, some, down, some lights down into the flower because that's run 
quite a lot, but that's fine because we just need to just drag some of that out. Right, I'm going to let that dry and please be dog. Okay, so this is now dry and I'm going to pick up some quinacridone gold and I'm going to come in and continue to just put shadows in to define where the petals are a little bit. And when you're doing this, it's probably quite a good idea to um, take your time and, and let it dry in between putting in some of the shadow because it will dry differently from what you expect. Always dries lighter. And um, yeah, so we'll do that layer and then come back in a second and see if we need to do any more. And now I'm going to take some some more of that dark brown and put that into the quinacridone gold and. Just put some dots around here. I'm not going to make this into a botanical painting by any means, just to give the impression of the center of the um, sunflower and emphasize the, the darks going up between the petals. Then arrête. leaves here we've got a, a a leaf that's turned here so that's like the top of it and we'll put <clears throat> some different shades of green underneath just to give it some variety. Let that dry and see how that looks. This one, oops, nearly dipped my brush into my um, T 
two there. And this one we're going to give some color and leave the veins, some paint between the veins a little bit. Leave the veins lighter. Put some stronger shadows in here and there. Always mixing the different blues with the quinacridone gold, that gives you a very rich uh, sunflowery kind of colour. Lots of yellow in these leaves up here. I think this one could probably handle the same treatment. So. And then we just warm up the stem by adding some quinacridone green gold to the stem there. Now the V, put the second layer of shadow on the wings. the veins and things. Um, just looking at my original to see what else. And I did have a lot more um, darkness here. On the legs and this one. And that needs a bit more here as well, where it ran some of the Payne's grey ran too much into the gold, but I don't think that, that matters too much, so that's okay. We'll do the antennae using a fine liner. Just like that, and then you could just put some little points there and maybe you might want to just get a little bit of You could just do a little bit of ink if you wanted to on the bee. Entirely optional. And now I'm going to wait for the for the flower to dry. Okay, now we're just coming to the final steps. I've put some green um, leaves in here. They're not exactly leaves. I think they're sepal, sepals or sepals which go behind the flower and that kind of lifts it a little bit and uh, gives it a little bit more shape, correct shape. And um, now I'm just going to put some, I've got some white gouache here, which I'm just going to mix with a little bit of um, quinacridone gold to give me an opaque a uh, light yellow colour and I'm just going to put in some um, light dots. keep wanting to put my brush into my empty teacup here. Uh, this is just to give a bit of more of a three-dimensional effect on the seed head of the um, sunflower. So we'll put them slightly smaller at the back 
slightly bigger at the front to give it an impression somewhat of um, perspective, scale. These will lighten up as they dry, they always do. And uh, it's quite useful if you feel that you've made a mistake in your petals and you don't know how to fix it, you can always lighten things up. So for example, you might want to you can always lighten things up with a bit of white. So you might, you might want to, for example, come in here and add some lighter highlights. You can do that with the white gouache. So you'd come in and do that, that kind of thing. But once you start down that road, it can be a bit of a slippery slope. Um, so you could end up regretting it. Okay, so we'll let that uh, do its thing. Um, I did just also want to put some, a few more. I'm using quite a lot of indigo mixed with quinacridone gold, which makes <clears throat> a very good green. Oops, too much water. Let me just put some veins in this leaf here. And I think really, I'm going to probably want to call that a day very soon. Might put a little bit more shadow on the bee's bottom there. And um, with the quinacridone yellow, you can come in and, and if you feel like it, some people do a lot of shadow on their sunflowers and you can also, if you wish. So there we are. I'm going to call that a day. Time to stop for the day. I think I've painted enough for one day. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give us a like and subscribe and turn on notifications. Um, I will put a sketch of this on the... Um, website dianeanton.com free of charge to download so just pop over there and download that one and any others that you want if you feel like painting a sunflower and um yeah i hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you again soon bye for now everybody bye bye <laughs>